yo what's up y'all i'm finally back with another video it's been kind of shaky on this channel to say the least but i'm here to stay if y'all have me and y'all enjoy the videos y'all know what to do but honestly let's just hop right into it before i go gone again so since we last talked a lot has happened in the nfl from the playoffs to the draft to free agency to coaching hires and all that type of stuff so we're at like kind of the stale point of the season so we're you know, Hard Knocks gets publicity. Shout out to the Jets for that, though. That should be pretty interesting to see Aaron Rodgers and Sauce and all of them just see how they do during the season because they're kind of a wild card. But back to the topic at hand. Yeah, man, we're kind of at that point in the season where we just see different scandals and hires and training camp, mini camp starts and stuff like that. So to recap the offseason, best way I can see is pretty much going over the team that had the best offseason, in my opinion. But before I make that case and explain why I believe that they're the best, I kind of want y'all to say what y'all think in the comment section. No bias, obviously. Just tell me what you think. Because, I mean, if I was biased, I would have just said the Colt. But before I get into the who the team is, which is pointless because you're going to see that from the thumbnail, but just sit back and vibe. So the honorable mentions up in the NFC North, there was like uh, there was like a lot of commotion with the Vikings losing key players like Thielen, Kendricks, Pat Pete. Tomlinson and the Packers losing A-Rod was very much at the top of the headlines and stuff like that. But they simply don't seem as scary as they once were. The Lions did a pretty good job and added valuable weapons like Marvin Jones Jr. and Jameer Gibbs to an already highly ranked offense. But they attempted to do something with their 32nd ranked defense, which is the worst in the NFL, obviously. But as you can see by the title and thumbnail, the Seattle Seahawks have been crowned by me as the team that had the best offseason. They kicked off their offseason with a bunch of doubts if they were going to decide to let Geno walk despite having an unexpected good year with them this past season and draft a quarterback. They had to fill holes in their team like their 26th ranked defense and yards allowed, but I think they did an excellent job filling their needs and even went above and beyond with the good decisions. So the first domino to fall for the Seahawks was the decision to not draft a quarterback and to instead lock in with Geno Smith, and they inked them to a very like team-friendly deal which was a three-year, $75 million deal with no guaranteed money beyond the first year, but has the upside of $105 million if he does meet his incentives. So I think that's a really good deal because, say he is trash again, or you know what I mean, they can pretty much get rid of him past the first year because they have no guaranteed money to him. So if he does do trash, like everyone's kind of thinking like, okay, is this guy really good or not? then they could just get rid of him by his next year he'll be done and the money just goes to wherever so i think that was a great deal for them i think it's a good deal for gino as well he gets the opportunity to keep proving himself and this makes this kind of gives him more pressure to continue to prove himself and i think he'll do that i mean i've seen stories from dk metcalf and stuff like that about gino smith being a really good leader and having a hard work ethic. I'll probably just pull up the video right now for y'all. So, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Give me like tidbits of information on what he saw on film. But now just going into training camp and he's the first one out there and first one at the facility. He's watching film. Mm. Nobody's, he's not talking. So he's just really? had his head down working. Roles and Love responsibilities it. have changed. Love it. Week eight, he gave us a pregame speech. Mm -hmm. And you could just see everybody just locked in on him because they seen how, how much he's matured and changed yeah. and he wasn't the same Gino. He was like, this is my team now. Like, y'all gonna listen. I've, I've put in the work and i put in the time to to where I've I've stapled my, my name yeah. uh, in Seattle. And he just, everybody just started to respect him. So on top of that, they decided to further bolster their offense. I mean, they added, I mean, they already had DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and the rising star Kenneth Walker. And they ranked ninth in scoring throughout the whole league. But by adding JSN, who I see as the best wide receiver out the class, and a shocking pick considering how well Kenneth Walker performed. But as we know, the running back position is much more than just a bell cow role nowadays. So with injuries looming, I think it was a good decision to pick up the big back Zach Charbonnet, who was 6'1", 220 with some speed and has already been touted as a professional by Seahawks coaches and stuff like that. So their offense is only going to get more dangerous. And if everyone plays well and together as they did last year, they'll give Geno pretty much a plethora of options to work with. So... That should be good for them. I could see them actually shocking some people. Defensively, they did an amazing job helping that side of the ball. Um, losing Bobby Wagner was a loss that they never really patched up, but they decided to replace him this year with himself by resigning him along for another year. After the rumors that there were bad that there was bad blood between 
Bobby Wagner and the Seahawks. The reunion is imminent and will help the Seahawks play better linebacker play overall because they really did struggle on that side of the ball, um, especially with the linebacker position. Um, they also added Devin Bush, who hopes to bounce back and is also on a team-friendly deal along with the other two. So they got their linebackers situated. Um, they added another piece to their defensive front, specifically on the end. They added Draymond Jones, who had six and a half sacks last year to go along with 10 quarterback hits. Uh, Julian Love, who's a safety coming over from the Giants, who had two interceptions, a forced fumble, over 120 tackles, and even a sack. They also added back another former Seahawk, Jerron Reed, to play tackle for them, but arguably their best pickup defensively may have came through the draft when they selected Devin Witherspoon with the fifth pick. He led the entire draft class in PFF coverage grade. He allowed just 35% of passes to go throughout of the 62 throne. Um, He had three interceptions, 14 pass breakups to go along with zero touchdowns allowed throughout the entire season. Uh, The Seahawks really did do a fantastic job in the draft, in my opinion. Uh, They drafted two players who, in my opinion, were the best in their position in the draft class. And they also happened to be skill positions. So along with that, they kept their quarterback for the future. They got him some more weapons, and they bolstered their defense, bringing back some of that Legion of Boom vibe. And, I mean, obviously, we're not just going to say they're going to be good because we haven't seen them play yet. But as of right now, they're looking pretty good. I'm excited to see what the 2023 season can bring for the Seahawks. Um, they added depth on all, depth on all three levels. Um, I, think they sh- I think they're going to be a really interesting team, and I think they'll compete with the Niners to end up winning the division. And from from there, the sky seems to be the limit. So to dive deeper into Devin Witherspoon, he's a 5'11", 180 prospect who's really explosive. He ran a 4.42 in his 40. He has insane acceleration, extremely heavy hitter. He's great in press coverage. He's good in hand usage. He has good hand placement. He has good ball location, route reading. He's great in run support. He'll probably be elite in run support by his first day in the NFL, but he's also an elite one-on-one corner. So this adds on to cornerback Tariq Woolen, who is already very speedy, who ran a 4-2-6-40 and led the NFL in interceptions last year. JSN was a clear-cut top 15 lock and best wide out prior to injury. If healthy, he will be sensational in my opinion. His former teammate Chris Olave already said he's the best receiver he's seen. So JSN showed talent in the Rose Bowl. That's kind of when he blew up. So after Olave and Garrett Wilson opted out, it kind of just left him for the Ohio State team. And he posted a 15 reception, 347 yard and three touchdown performance and a victory over number 11 ranked Utah. And pretty much for him, he's a great route runner. He has reliable hands. He gives the Seahawks like a slot receiver, Cooper Cup type vibe. And really, it makes the Seahawks one of the best trios in the league. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but other than uh, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd, I would say that the Seahawks having DK, Tyler Lockett, and JSN now, I think that might be the second best trio in the league. So uh, they really had an underrated offseason, in my opinion. I think they're the clear-cut favorite to have the best team. Nope. Best offseason. Nope. Best team to have. Best offseason that a team can have. Geno Smith, obviously, like I said earlier, DK explained how he had great leadership. He changed up attitude. He showed maturity. He showed that he was a veteran. He's very dedicated. Um, last year, he had a great season. He completed over 70% of his passes. He led the Seahawks to the playoffs. He got 4,000 passing yards to go along with 30 touchdowns and only 11 interceptions. So he was also eighth in air yards, which is very important because it's kind of showing that he did not just check it down all the time and throw these baby little passes like he's not just a game manager. He's willing to throw the ball deep. He was third in air yards overall, so he's a great deep ball thrower, just as Russell Wilson was. He's kind of fitting that mold. Uh, he's more familiar with the offensive coordinator, obviously, getting another year. He was the comeback player of the year last year, pro bowler, and he will be coming back with some vengeance. So it's going to be fun to see. But with that being said, thank y'all for watching. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe if y'all like the video. And y'all catch on the next one. Peace.